Hi, everyone. My name is Jeremy Dalton. I'm the head of XR at PwC UK, and I'm also the author of Reality Check, a book about XR in business. XR technology is often confusing for people because there are lots of terms in the industry. There are some you may have heard of, like virtual reality and augmented reality, and there are others less so, like mixed reality and augmented virtuality. But the good news is the only things you need to know are augmented reality and virtual reality. Now, augmented reality is all about information. It's about providing digital information on top of your real world view so that whatever you're looking at, you can understand that better. You can perform procedures better. You can navigate in a simple and easier to understand way. Virtual reality is all about immersion. It's about engrossing you in a completely different environment or time or scenario. And both of those technologies have different uses, but they all come under the umbrella term XR or extended reality, as it's sometimes elongated to. So the ability to touch things or feel things in virtual reality, that attaching to that sense of touch, that's all about haptics technology. And there are lots of haptics, gloves, and other types of technology to help you accomplish that sense of feeling things in a virtual environment. There is one particular company which uh, I actually had the, the uh, pleasure of demoing their hardware. And it's a company called Haptex. And what they do is they have a pair of haptics gloves that you can wear. And they're on these gloves, there are lots of little air pockets, hundreds of them all around your each of your fingers, throughout your palm. And what happens is an air compressor sends air only to the bubbles that relate to the part of your hand that is touching something in the virtual world. So that's absolutely incredible technology and really, really exciting. When it comes to walking or running in virtual reality, there are an equal number of different solutions that you can use to accomplish that. They tend to get called omnidirectional treadmills. And the idea is, as you can imagine, you're standing on some sort of platform, usually it's circular in shape, and in some senses you're sliding on the on the platform itself to give you that, to allow you to run or walk while staying in the same place. And other solutions actually do function like a real treadmill. And every time you walk away from the center, little rollers bring you back to the center. And the faster you, you run, the faster they bring you back. So it sometimes gets a, gets a bit of, um, it takes a bit of getting used to, but uh, it's the, the end result is, is pretty amazing. So China is a very impressive com uh, country when it comes to XR technology. And the reason being is that they have investment at all levels. So from a government perspective, the government is putting money in and creating strategies that encourage the further development and the further investment in time and money in the technology itself. And also on the other side of the equation, from the consumer perspective, a lot of people in the Chinese market really enjoy using virtual reality and augmented reality technology to an extent that we don't see as much of in the Western world. There are already hundreds of thousands of internet cafes in China offering virtual reality sessions for just a few dollars. And there are lots of manufacturers in China that are building these devices that are helping to spread the word around the technology and what it can do. XR has a lot of uses, both in our everyday life as well as in our professional life. So in the consumer world or our everyday life, think of augmented reality when it comes to getting to places, navigating different environments and being able to present that view of the arrows and the directions that you need to follow to get from one place to another. It enables you to get to places more easily, in other words. Also, there's shopping. Now, when you browse the internet and you're looking at different listings on websites, it's okay. You know, it gives you an idea of what the different products are. But imagine you could bring those products into your real world and put them on your table. So if you were interested in buying a printer or a computer or, let's say, a, um, 
a mixer for your kitchen, you could put that on your table or on your ki kitchen counter using nothing more than your mobile phone. It's quite amazing and it really connects you to those products and helps you to give you the best possible information to make that purchasing decision. There's also a lot of uses when it comes to clothing. So if you use augmented reality in the form of a magic mirror, for example, you can see clothes on you without having to go through the rigmarole of getting dressed and changing and undressing and redressing and collecting things from the store, bringing them into the changing room and all of that hassle. You can simply click a few buttons and see those different items of clothing appear on you in real time. It's quite amazing. From a virtual reality perspective, there is gaming, of course, I'm sure you've heard, and all sorts of entertainment type applications. The wonderful thing is, within entertainment as well, in particular, sports is a big, big area for virtual reality and a really big up and coming area at that. Imagine being able to be in the front row of a stadium, a tennis pitch, or even a live event, let's say a theatrical production or, uh, or a concert and feeling like you're actually really there, looking left and seeing, you know, the crowd next to you, looking right, seeing at the person next to you over there, and then choosing how you want to engage with that show. And the wonderful thing is because you're, because of the infrastructure and the fact that you're able to occupy this front row seat, hundreds and thousands of others are actually able to occupy that same seat at the same time. So that means for such an immersive experience, the costs come down. And it's a beautiful midway between actually being there live and watching it on a small 2D screen, let's say. And then finally, you've got the tourism aspects, the ability to travel the world or at least preview different parts of the world in a far more impactful and immersive way than you would otherwise be able to do by looking at a brochure, checking out a website or seeing a few images and videos on screen. Now that's all about the personal world. But what about the business world? The business world has loads of applications for XR. You can use XR in learning and development to practice soft skills, things like practicing public speeches, like negotiating with customers, like dealing with customers on the shop floor. You can use it for practical skills. How do you maintain different bits of machinery for remote assistance when you're trying to look at the view of a field engineer out there in the field and, and seeing through their perspective, understanding what are they looking at and helping them to perform procedures on their machinery. It's also being used for remote working, which is particularly relevant um, during the pandemic, where you can work together with others and really feel like you're having that same experience in a way that you can't get when you're simply using a video conferencing tool. You can use it to visualize different assets and environments. And this kind of relates to the tourism point I was talking about before in the personal world. You can use it to visualize hidden utilities. So we all know that there's an underground network beneath us of, of gas pipes, electrical wires, and all sorts of things. And they very much remain hidden, but for a lot of workers and, um, and, and field engineers, they need to be they need to be transparent. They need to understand where exactly those pipes are laid so that they can avoid accidents and damage like utility strikes, which can not only, not only hurt people, but also cost lives sometimes as well. And it's also been used in courts of law. So the UK has used it as a virtual reality as a form of evidence in courts of law. It's being used in sales and marketing purposes to understand how consumers react when they're in a shopping center or a different buying environment. As you can tell, there are just so many applications of the technology in both the business and the personal world, and I'm super excited about them all. Two virtual reality headsets that I find very impressive and you should definitely check out if you get the chance. One of them is the Oculus Quest 2, and this is a, a great start for consumers that are looking at getting, dipping their toe into the world of virtual reality. It's a reasonably inexpensive headset at $299. It has a pleasant user experience, so it's quite easy and intuitive to use. And there's a lot of content out there that you can, you can check out. For the more hardcore among you, check out the Valve Index, which is a fantastic headset. Be, be wary though that it requires a really powerful PC 
But if you do have a powerful PC, usually a, a gaming PC or similar, then you'll have quite an amazing time using this headset and you'll be able to experience a lot of really high fidelity virtual reality games and worlds. From an augmented reality perspective, the wonderful news here is that if you have a smartphone, then the likelihood is you already have the ability to experience a lot of high-end augmented reality. And for those of you who are looking at the higher end of the market, check out the iPhone 12 Pro, which will allow you to not only have those high-end augmented reality experiences, but also allow you to scan your environment around you and create effectively a 3D model of what you're able to see that you can then play around with, share with friends, and incorporate into different VR and AR applications. XR technology continues to impress me, but one of its most recent advancements is in the area of volumetric capture, and that is particularly exciting and impressive. So volumetric capture is in a nutshell creating a type of three-dimensional video by using hundreds of cameras all around you they can capture not only a three-dimensional model of yourself but they can also apply a video stream on top of that model so the end result is you get a three-dimensional view of you that is actually really photorealistic and can be incorporated in virtual reality applications augmented reality applications or any 3D application on your computer. Definitely check out Alex Rule. I've worked with her many a time at PwC for different productions, and she is an absolutely fantastic virtual reality director and scriptwriter. I'd also check out Alvin Wang Graylin. We talked about the, the power of China when it comes to the XR market. Alwyn is HTC Vive's China president, and he's very much on the pulse of all the exciting things that are coming to the virtual reality market.